So what is power in physics? All right, so let's take a look at this and hopefully not spend a huge amount of time okay, on the definition, but rather on a few examples to try to illustrate to you that it's actually not that difficult to be able to calculate and utilize the formula for power. So power in general is basically a scalar quantity. So it's not a vector, okay, it's a scalar. Now, the reason why it's a scalar is because it captures Okay, the rate of transferring energy. Now, the word rate you have seen okay, over time, probably in math, and anytime we hear the word rate, it is some kind of a change. Now, when we're talking here with regards to the rate, it is a rate of changing with respect to time. So now, what is actually changing with respect to time? And you can see here that within our actual formula, it is the energy and it is the energy that is being transferred, okay? And now, energy being transferred is really just work, okay? So how much work, okay, the amount of network that you would do in order to transfer from one form of energy to another, and how quickly you are doing that. So here, the quickly is the concept now introducing time into it. Now, if you recall that energy, which is measured in joules, okay, or kilojoules, or maybe calories, depending on which unit, but energy wasn't interested in how fast or how quick you were doing something. Now, you definitely are interested in, you know, how quick you might do something. You know, you can imagine, okay, if you give someone a task, um, now, on the assumption okay, that the quality of the task completed is going to be the same, you probably will favor the person that can do it faster so they can do it quicker because they can produce the same results but doing it in a faster way. Now, when we're capturing power, that's exactly what we're doing. So we are interested in, okay, so how quickly can you do a certain task? And now the doing of task is measured by the amount of work that someone does. And the amount of work that someone does is the actual transfer of energy that you have. So it's the change of energy that you have. So that is why we're writing a delta. So delta E just means the change in energy divided by the change in time. Now, when you're taking in the energy, you will notice that the unit, the standard unit was joules, and the standard unit for time, at least in SI units, is seconds. So therefore, as you can see here, the actual units for power is joules per second. So it isn't anything extraordinary. Now that joules per second is actually okay, now kind of named, and we're changing it instead of using joules per second, we use watts and we typically will designate it with a capital W. Now, please do not confuse that these two W's are different. One is work and then one is actually a unit for power. Now, watts, okay, so basically was a scientist. So if you can go back, okay, so studied, I believe it was kind of steam engines, okay, that within there and we have designated watts, okay, for joules per second in terms of our unit. Now, of course, you can do you can use kilowatts, so it just means a thousand times the order of a watt, okay? And you can use any other prefixes attached to watts. Milliwatts, for example, can be used as well, and that is related towards prefixes, which I can put a link up above there for you. So now, with this concept of power, well, how would we actually calculate it? So when you're starting off within your physics and your foundational physics, you know, what is it possibly that you would do, okay, in order to calculate these? So let's take a look at a glance of, of several examples so that it gives you a good concept of how to do these calculations. So here's my first example that I have for you. So it isn't a very difficult example, at least I hope not. Okay, so here we have Jason, okay, has used 425 calories to transfer chemical energy to kinetic and thermal energy during a run. So this is the concept and idea of changing of energy, right? So it is the change of energy. So you have, okay, some chemical energy as a runner that you're basically transforming that you can now use it for kinetic and unfortunately thermal energy as well because your temperature, you, you will feel that you're getting a little bit hotter. 
So within this, okay, this particular runner has used, okay, or Jason has used 425 calories. The run itself took 38 minutes. And now we're asked to calculate the power of the runner. All right, so let's see how we could do that. So if we're going to be taking this in, so this is the given pieces of information, so we can certainly do that. So here is one, which is the total amount of energy that has been transferred. That's 425 calories. So we can certainly do that. That is the change in energy, or that is also equal to the amount of work okay, that the runner had to do during the run. And that 425 calories, well, that is not actually in our SI unit. So we may want to be able to change this up. So you can see there that one calorie is equal to, and it gives us the conversion. So I'm going to use that conversion so that I am all in standard units. So there we have it. Okay. And now I can put this in here. So 425 multiplied by 4184. And you can see there that it's actually quite a lot. Now I'm not going to do any rounding as of yet. Okay, so this is the amount of joules, okay, that we would have, which really is, notice that it's in mega joules, right? Mega because it's, it's in the millions now, but I'll just keep it in here so that I can do my calculation. So that's one, that's the change of energy that I have. The run itself, so notice that the run or the change in time for the run was 38 minutes. Now, this is in minutes, and again, this is not a standard, so we would want to be able to convert this, so just be careful. Now, one minute is equal to 60 seconds, so this one is a little bit easier to do. So I can do that and calculate it, so 38 multiplied by the 60, the minutes will cancel, and this just tells me how many seconds this particular run has taken. And now from here, so if you want to be able to calculate, so let me just move this out of the way, if you want to be able to calculate the power, so the power is equal to the change of energy or the work that has been done over the change in time, well, I can substitute all of this in here. So that's my energy change. Here is my change in my time. I'll notice it's joules per second. So now I can take out my calculator back and I can put it all in here in terms of the calculation. So that is the division, so 2280, and there you have it. So that is going to be approximately, I'm just kind of scanning back in, and let's keep two significant figures here, and it would be about 780 watts. So 780 watts, which is 780 joules per second. And what does that mean? That means that every single second, right, the runner is utilizing 780 joules during that particular run. So every second that passes by, the runner is going to be using that much, okay, um, or doing that much work or transferring that much, that much energy. So that's the calculation. Now, this one, if it wasn't so much for the unit conversions, would have been rather simple. But I like the unit conversions because it forces you to kind of think, okay, to put things back into standard units. So do not forget SI, standard units. So change energy always to joules and then change your time always to seconds. And then you can get your watts back. So that's one. Here's another example that I have for you. So a person with a mass of 76 kilograms has climbed a set of stairs in 10 seconds. All right, so let's write all of this in here. So let's put in the given. So here we have, so our mass, that's one. Here we have the time that it took this person and the flight of stairs had a height, okay, of 10.5 meters. Now this 10.5 meters, because it doesn't say anything, of course, your flight of stairs, if you can imagine, so that's gonna be, you know, something, okay, along this line. And then you're going to have, you know, your stairs climbing up. So, you know, here's one, you know, here's another one. Okay. And then this obviously continues. Now, when they're saying, okay, this is 10.5, I'm going to assume that this is my height. Okay. So it's the vertical height that I have in there for the actual stairs. And that is 10.5 meters. So just always be careful and see what are they referring to 
right? So hopefully it's not the actual kind of hypotenuse there, okay? Because then you would have to get a triangle and then find out what that 10.5 meters would be. You know, maybe you would need an angle there. But this is the height itself, right? So that you're going. Now, this person's mass is 76 kilograms. So that's great. That's in standard units, okay? The actual time that this took, so the delta T was 10 seconds. So that's what we have for that. So the change in time. But now, unfortunately, we do not have the amount of work that was done or the transfer of energy. Now, so within here, so what we will be doing okay, in general, if we don't have any further information, then we typically will calculate the amount of work that would be needed okay, or the amount of energy that this person would have if they did climb. And that would have been relating it back to gravitational potential energy. So if you remember, you know, anytime you lift an object, it doesn't have to be a person, but any object, you can go back and you can calculate the gravitational potential energy. You can put up a link up above there, okay, to that. And so therefore, what I will do is I'm going to calculate my gravitational potential energy, which is nothing else but mass multiplied by the gravity itself, so the acceleration due to gravity, and then the height. So this right here is not very difficult because I do have all of this information, and G is always 9.8, okay? Or whatever your teachers might use, sometimes they might use 9.81. Hey, there is actually quite a few decimal places, but I typically use 9.8, and that's fine. And here is my height. So that's the total energy. Now notice everything is in standard units. So I can just plug it all back in. So that's that multiplied by uh, multiply all of them together. I'll just keep it. So this is the amount of energy that has been or work. Okay, that you would have to do in order to get this person up there. So now that's the energy transfer. All right, so that's my energy transfer that I would have. So it would go from the person basically going up all the way. Now, if I wanted to calculate the power, well, in order to calculate power now, so that's going to be the change, okay, or the work done divided by delta T. Now, delta T was given, so therefore this is not very difficult for us. This is 10 seconds, this is in joules. I don't even need to take out my calculator. So as you can see here, so this is 782 because it's dividing by uh, 10 seconds. So it's about this much. I mean, if we want to round it, let's say, okay, so this would have been approximately 280 joules per second, okay? Or you can use watts for your unit. So interestingly enough, right, notice that the above question was 780 um, and so is this one. This is a pure coincidence, right? So when I was setting these up, I actually didn't do the calculations beforehand. Um, you know, this is probability of this was <laughs> next to nothing. Okay, but yet we've got pretty much the same thing. All right, so that's another example that you have to calculate power. Here's my last example for you. And this one is a pretty neat one because it relates back also to energy efficiency. And that is, you know, something I can put up a link up above there to energy efficiency. So if you've forgotten that. Now, the question states, a medical device has transferred 210 joules of energy in 320 milliseconds into an imaging software. Unfortunately, the device has an energy efficiency of 2.85%. What was the power needed to complete this process? All right, so the efficiency is not very high. So let's start writing down all our givens so that we can lay this out as a problem itself. So it looks like, you know, the energy transfer, okay? So this was the energy transfer, 210. And now we have to be careful because you might want to say that this is, this is delta E, right? So now I'm gonna put a question mark. But because this is efficiency, so really this is the um, energy, okay, that was utilized for the desired process. So if you go back to um, the efficiency equation, so efficiency is equal to the energy out. So this is the desired output energy 
okay, that you have, but here is the energy that you had to input into the process. And this was always as a percent. Now they're telling us that this thing, okay, is only 2.85%. So this is the output. So you've utilized 210 joules in order to create this this uh, this actual you know imaging whatever you had to do there and that's now makes this a little bit trickier so what we want is we want this we want how much was the total amount of energy used and that's going to be our change okay in total because we have to utilize that much from kind of electrical okay energy and then we have to transfer it in in that process to be able to put this down on whatever software that we had to do so now what is this energy in we do not know we are told okay not only this energy but we are also told how long this process took so it didn't take very long so that would have been my delta t so this one is 320 but notice it's milliseconds so be careful. So again, with the prefixes, okay, so for this, so we would have to change this back, okay, and I'll do that shortly. Now, let me go back in here in terms of this efficiency. So I'll try to calculate it here on the side, okay, in order to do this. So the energy that we've utilized was 210 joules. We want to be able to solve this thing. That 100% I'm going to put on the other side. So I'm going to divide both sides by this so I don't have to deal with the percent. And therefore, so what we will have, so let's take out our calculator. So this is going to be, you know, divided by 100. So 0 0.0285. So that's transferring it into percent. Okay, so that's divided by that. And now what we need, so notice my energy in is going to be equal to 210 divided by... 0 0.0285 so that's what I have to do in order to find out the total amount of energy that I have to input into this process 285 so that is now equal to so notice it's quite quite a bit of energy I'll just keep kind of two decimal places in there it's more than enough and for this one so let me just swipe this out um, if we want to know what the power needed, okay, to complete this process is, well, we have now our energy, so that's that. That's my delta E, okay, from power. Now I still need, so notice that right here, I'm still going to need this. And what I'll do is I want to transfer this back into seconds. So one second is equal to milli, means, okay, so we have... 1,000 um, milliseconds, okay, is, e is equivalent to one second. So that's what we have, or you can just move the decimal three places over, and this is gonna be 0 0.32 you know, seconds. And now you can calculate your power. So your power now would be, so P is equal to, so I need the change in energy. In this case, this is delta T, and that's gonna be seven, three six eight point four two divided by zero point three two this is joules this is seconds so we're going to get watts back so let's take this it's great this is still on the calculator so use it divided by zero point three two and we have so notice two three zero you know two six watts right so this is about 23,000 watts, okay, or you can say 23,000 kilowatts, and that would have been your answer. So quite a bit, okay, of power, all right? So there you have it. So those are several examples that you have, and hopefully now this introduces you to the concept of power and how to compute it. Um, the hardest thing to typically know is, you know, what is that change in energy and then how to obtain it um, dividing it by time is typically not that huge of a deal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.